a function f of x, y is a function with two inputs, x and y, which means it has two partial derivatives. The partial derivative of f with respect to x, which is a derivative where we pretend y is constant and look at the rate of change in f as x changes, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y which is a derivative where we pretend that x is just a number and look at the rate of change in f as y changes. If you're comfortable with computing ordinary derivatives, then calculating partial derivatives isn't much harder. Let's try some examples to illustrate how simple the process is. Let's let f of xy equal x squared times y. Let's calculate the f dx. To calculate the f dx, we need to pretend that y is just a fixed number. For example, let's pretend that y is 47. Then if we try to take the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared times 47, we know we can take the 47 out of the derivative And so we have 47 times the derivative with respect to x of x squared. Well, that's just 2x. Now, of course, this 47 is just y. So what we can conclude is that the partial derivative of f with respect to x is y times 2x. Or we could write it as 2xy. What about the partial derivative of f with respect to y? Here we need to think of x as a fixed number. Let's call x c for a constant. Then d dy of f is d dy of c squared times y. Since c is just a number, we can pull it out of the derivative pull the c squared out of the derivative, and we're left with c squared times the derivative of y, which is just 1. So the result is c squared, which we can remember is just x squared. We've determined that df dy is x squared. Let's try another example. We'll say f of x, y is x squared times e to the x, y. Let's do the easy one first. df dy is d dy of x squared e to the x, y. In this case, we'll leave x as is. We won't call it a number or a different letter, but we'll just remember that it's a fixed number. This means that the x squared can come out of the derivative, and so we have x squared times the derivative of e to the y times some number. Now we need to use the chain rule. First, we take a derivative of the exponential function, which is the function itself, so we get back e to the xy. Now we need to multiply it by the derivative with respect to y of xy. But since x is just a number, we see that this derivative is just x, because it's x times the derivative of y, which is 1. So df dy is x cubed times e to the xy. The derivative df dx requires a couple more steps. 
because x appears in two places. First of all, we must use the product rule because both factors depend on x. Before, we didn't need to use the product rule because only one of the factors depended on y. The product rule says we need to take the derivative of the first term times the second term plus the first term times the derivative of the second term. d d x of x squared is 2x, so we get 2x times e to the x y. Here we need to use the chain rule again, this time using the derivative with respect to x. When we do that, we get the derivative of the exponential function, which is itself, times d dx of xy. And d dx of xy, well y is just a number, so it comes out, and we get, just get y. So we get for our derivative 2x e to the xy plus x squared times y e to the xy. And these are our two partial derivatives of the function x squared times e to the xy.